Bang! Needs knives. I'm Jared, and what's going on, everybody? I was trying to chat with you guys in the the chat before the video started, and for some reason, I got this symbol over my chat, like a help me symbol, and wouldn't let me do it. I tried talking to StreamYard, and you know, wound up uh, taking too much time until this started. Give me one second. I'm going to turn this on so you're going to hear some noise. It's Lefty EDC's live, but I'm just turning it down so I can turn on my own own video. All right. So how's everybody doing? Um, I got a bunch of stuff I want to talk about, um, including one thing that I, I kind of messed up on. Um, how many people are in here? I don't want to say it until there's a few people in here. I know it's probably going to be... Um, Semi-small live tonight. I know a lot of people are at Blade Show having their fun. But, uh, you know, regardless, whoever shows up tonight, I had to at least do a live for these guys. The guy's not at Blade Show. I know Lefty EDC, he's live right now with DTOM um, from Blade Show, or at least from their hotel. Lucky bastards. But, uh, yeah, I'm really jealous. But I did pay bama knife guy to pick me up something what's up ethan what's up seems logical lacy talica mark fiend how are you guys how, how are all of you guys doing let me get this off of here so what did i pick up that's the question what did i pick up i wound up picking up <clears throat> because okay so before it was an, it's an ad 20.5 that's what i want to get it but I tried to get one before from Demco when, before they came out and I tried to get one. I asked him, I said, Hey, you know, um, I'd love to get one on. I said, you know, I got, you know, your regular version the the 80, 20, I would love to get the 20.5 on the channel. And he's like, no, we already sent them all out to all the knife reviewers or whatever, the ones we had for the knife reviewers. And I was basically like, yeah, I, well, you know, I'm not asking you to give it to me. You know, I'll buy it, you know, but I'm going to review it and everything. And I wasn't trying to pull the, I got a channel card, you know, I don't really like to do that unless if I need to, but, um, but that's what I was asking for. And he couldn't do it. He said, uh, he did say like, oh, when more comes available, I'll let you know. And I know he's a busy dude, you know, I don't, you know regardless that doesn't matter the point is is that then when they came to where we could like you know pre-order or buy them or whatever i already have this one right i already have this one and i feel bad buying them right when other people haven't had a chance to experience it so what i want up doing all those are gone, right? So the only way you can get them right now in this moment that I know of is specifically from Blade Show. So I had Bama Knife Guy pick me up a, a shark's foot version, which is badass. I almost just got one of these versions because this clip point, this type of blade shape is great. It's pretty much a drop point. And now that I'm talking it and saying it to myself, I, I almost wish I would have. Like, the shark's foot's badass. I like the shark's foot. But this is a perfect blade shape for, like, everything for me. But I did want to get the shark's foot now. I'm thinking about having a regrind done to it. And now I'm kind of upset that I didn't just get the fucking clip point. Because I think the regrind would look better on the clip point version. But maybe not. Either way, I'm thinking about talking to... Uh, BGM knives, possibly having a regrind done on it, and uh, you know a nice hollow grind on the AD twenty point five, but we'll see what happens. Um, so <clears throat> burnt edges. So I had a question. You want to get the shark's foot too, Jacob? Yeah, man, I like that. I like this. You know, this blade shape is great. The shark's foot is awesome too. I like them both, but I figured I already had this version. Why would I get the exact same version with the other one? Well, it is smaller. It is more compact. There's lots of reasons why I would get the other version with the same blade shape. But I did wind up getting the shark's foot, which is still awesome. I think it'd be sick too, Talica. A nice regrind, uh, a nice hollow grind, 
even if it's a flat grind, regardless, just a nice regrind because the blade is already thinner. It's already slicier and it's a hard juice knife already. That's badass. But I feel like since it's the compact, you know, different version, like I don't want to regrind this one. This is just too badass, you know, but, um, what's up, Joe Brown? Um, you got the, you got the shark's footed blade show. <clears throat> That's where mine's coming from too, from Bama knife guy. Good old Bama's got my back. I was going to ask Stasa 23 and I was like, no, I'm going to ask Bama. Oh, Bama's there. I wish I would have went guys. I really do. Burnt edges. Um, I have somebody that asked me to explain burnt edges. I know a lot of you guys do understand it already. Some of you guys don't. So we're going to talk about it real quick. Now, how does a burnt edges, how do knives get burnt edges? Well, first of all, we got to back up and go to heat treat. So when they take the steel, the way they heat treat it, and a lot of you guys probably know this, they heat it up to a specific temperature for that steel and then cool it off. And that when during the cooling process, it hardens it because during the heating up process, it makes it softer, you know. So they go from a softer version of that steel Cool it down. Hey, mom. There's my mom in here. Mwah. Um, I just got a phone Joey just a little bit ago. That was to my mother. Um, hey, Mark H. Thanks, boss. I appreciate that, bud. Um, thank you for the donation. Where was I? Oh, yeah. So it's softer during the heating process, and then they cool it off and it gets hard from cooling it off real quick, right? Now when they grind the blade out, they use a belt, right? They belt it, you know, a, an electric belt goes around. They grind the, the blade down to, you know, however, you know, whatever shape they're going to do, they do it, right? Now, <clears throat> when they do that, they, they usually cool it off. They usually keep dipping it in water as they're grinding it. And that belt really ain't too crazy fast. And they grind it down. Some of them are CNC machined in a machine and then there's you know a, a little like just a belt used to eh, only a belt used for the finish so it just kind of depends but when we get down to the edge the edge is always done with a belt now if that belt is a going extremely fast and they don't use water to cool the edge it can get very hot and if they have an old belt, it's really going to get hot because the abrasives are gone from it. And it's, you know, it's just a spinning belt on the steel. Well, like if you see sparks, you're burning the edge. Sparks is a good indicator of you're burning that steel. So when it heats up the edge, it makes it very, um, like think about burning anything. It makes it chippy. It makes it, uh, um, more susceptible to breaking and you know it's just it heats it up too much and it's not like the heat treat where that actually makes it hard and tough it may, it overdoes it and it makes it very brittle that's the word i was looking for it makes it brittle so now now all edges are going to be burnt just because they come from a factory but you got a good chance that it's going to happen now another thing with the belt finishes that come from factories the steel and also this depends on the type of belts they're using because there's different kinds of belts now i know one professional sharpener he's a professional sharpener but he sharpens everything on belts okay so he basically does free or sorry factory edges but in his shop now he used to use the aluminum oxide belts and they're, they're, they're kind of expensive and not really, but he would have to replace them all the time. Well, then he switched now to diamond belts. It's a belt with diamonds on it and it lasts a very, very long time. Problem is they're very expensive. So he's getting way better edges than he used to previously. Well, a lot of companies they're not able to use belts like that they're using basically a belt you know with aluminum oxide on it and that type of material sharpening super steels isn't going to be the best material to sharpen it is it going to sharpen it yes is it going to make it sharp yes is it going to be a good edge possibly but there's a chance of it 
being burnt. And there's a chance of the aluminum oxide just not doing the high carbide steels justice. And now certain steels, it's not going to be that big of a deal as for the type of belt, meaning like the aluminum oxide, but it still is going to be susceptible to being a burnt edge. It's always going to have a chance of that on a belt going very fast. Now, like my belt system, when I use my belt sharpening, that system doesn't go fast enough to burn the edge. It just doesn't. Um, now, maybe possibly if I'm using an old shitty belt and I do got it on high, possibly. I always turn it on low. I always have it on the lowest setting. I never go above the lowest setting. So I never have a possibility of burning an edge. So if somebody sends me a bunch of kitchen knives, right, and they just want me to put factory edges on the kitchen knives, you know, I charge $10 a piece for about you know, sharpening. There's no chance of it burning. So it's basically just a factory edge that's not burnt. But you're still not going to get the edge performance that you would get out of a a fixed angle system <clears throat> or a freehand edge because I'm using different materials to sharpen the, the, the blade. So it's done, being done a lot slower, you know, a lot more. It's just a better quality edge, basically. And like I said, the, the materials, the abrasives I'm using to sharpen the steel ha has shown in testing from other people, not from me, but from other channels that the edges are superior. The edges do last longer. Like Outpost 76, I always reference him. Can't wait to get him on. He showed in his testing that between an aluminum oxide finish versus a diamond finish on, uh, I forget what steel it was. I'm sorry, guys. But it was like uh, 200 cut different, like 200 feet of cardboard difference with that edge. So what you're using to sharpen your edges definitely matters. And a factory is always going, as far as I know, always going to be using the, just the regular belts, you know, that you get a belt finish from, that's going to be aluminum oxide that's on that belt. And aluminum oxide, the, the reason why it's not going to sharpen super steels to the level of which diamonds will is because the carbides in the steel are so hard and so big that yeah, it sharpens it, but from on a microscopic level, it's, it's yanking the carbides out or not, you know, like it's not really sharpening. I'm sure it sharpens it a little bit, but versus a diamond, which is absolutely harder than the carbides and it can, so it can sharpen it. The aluminum oxide isn't as hard. Now, granted, a lot of people will argue that, well, what about ceramic? Ceramic is made from aluminum oxide. Like there's lots of things people talk about, like even sapphires. Sapphires are made from aluminum oxide. You know, the, the stones in your rings and stuff, those are made from aluminum oxide. So a lot of people will argue, well, it, wouldn't it be the same thing? But th it's different because just like a lot of things like clay, think about clay. Clay is different than a pot, but they're made from the same thing. So you're just getting, there's, it might be the same thing, but from different temperatures, time, pressure, all those things makes it a different hardness level. So hopefully that explained a burnt edge. Okay. <clears throat> now I want to talk about a couple steels. First, I want to talk about N690, but first I'm going to go through the chat, and then we're going to talk about Nitro V, but let's go through the chat really quick and see what you guys are saying, and then we'll get to a couple of the things I want to talk about. I use a Jared Neve to sharpen a few of my knives. Is that That's definitely a good system to use, definitely, most definitely. The mic cover looks like a, a triple from Star Trek. I usually get, it looks like a bunny's uh tail or uh you know like a what are those things called it looks like a rabbit's tail that's what usually people say remember do you guys remember people i'm sure people still do carrying around a lucky rabbit's foot and you could get them out when i was a kid you could get them out of the coin machines you can put 50 cents in spin the thing and a fucking rabbit's foot would come out 
<laughs> on a keychain, and people would walk around with rabbit's feet. Think, really think about that. We're fucking kids walking around with feet from a rabbit and saying we're lucky. That that rabbit wasn't very lucky. I don't know how the foot makes you lucky. <laughs> Oh, just got home from Blade Show. All right, luckiness. <laughs> Keep rubbing it in. Just rub it in a little deeper. Matt Lambert says, speaking of kitchen knives, what angle do you put on your kitchen knives? I put a 14 degree on my Wustoffs. So I don't necessarily, sorry. I don't necessarily have like an exact Sorry, I keep hitting shit. An exact angle, but I do. I think <clears throat> it's good to go like fifteen degrees. Seventeen degrees is probably the the highest I would go. Now, unless if it's a chopper. Now, obviously, choppers. I you know, depending on the thickness and everything, the highest I personally would probably ever go is maybe 20 degrees but most of the time with most kitchen knives it's going to be 15 15 to 17 um i think that that's a great edge now if it's extremely thin it, you know it just kind of depends but uh most kitchen knives are very thin and have great geometry already so just putting a good apex on that on the, the edge is real you know it goes really far also the steel, you know, like because some of these, this junk, I don't want to say junk, but because all kitchen knives for the most part are just regular stainless. Now, if you're talking about a VG10 kitchen knife, that, that's a little different. I think it can hold that angle a little bit better to where, you know, 14, 15 degrees is great. But with a regular kitchen knife just made out of stainless, probably around 17 degrees. Maybe a little lower, just depends. Um, seems logical says I usually sharpen at 17 and a half for European chef knives, Japanese. It's more like 13.5 to 15. Yeah, exactly. See, I like how you broke that down because there, there are so many different kinds of, um, kitchen knives, chef knives, and then also the, the grinds, you know, are, is cause <clears throat> you know, some chef knives have a thick spine on them. And they might be thin at the, the edge, but they, you know, they're not going to be as thin as, say, something that's micro thin. You know, kitchen knife should be very thin for the most part, though. I held a $10,000 Koenig today. Rubbing it in, Big Daddy. Rub it in. Just keep rubbing it on in, Shane. Lacey says, I know, Monster. It's a, a birthday gift. Monday don't come soon enough. Ah, uh, happy birthday. Happy birthday. Stamped versus forged, too. Stamped versus forged, yeah. Yeah, definitely. That is a huge deal. That's because if it's a... Okay, so some of the stamped steels, and what he's talking about, guys, is there's, you know, like some companies from wherever, when they make kitchen knives, they're making so many of them, they're not forging them. They're just stamping them out. They're basically taking a big old sheet of metal and a big machine says just stamping out a blank and then they take that blank and then they sharpen it so um i think you know who else does that i think um oh man i can't think of the company oh, man. those fixed blades um mora's 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 do that with some of their their uh their knives but versus uh, a kitchen knife that's actually forged where they actually banged on it with uh with a hammer and stuff that's going to be way different um blade geometry matters more in a kitchen knife than anything absolutely absolutely um yes 10,000 i bet you did brother i bet you did <laughs> what was it that's the question what was it here I'm sitting here fucking playing with a Nemtech, and you're just rubbing in your ten thousand dollar knife that you got to play with. I flipped it like it was mine. He says, "I bet you did." <laughs> uh, you know what I seen one time, and don't get me wrong, guys. I, I'm not trying to give anybody ideas, so don't get it in your head. So. There's obviously some very good clones out there, right? 
some really good clones. I seen one time somebody brought a clone watch. So what they did was they did a swipe. So they went to a watch place with a clone of a very expensive Rolex. I think it was a Rolex. And they asked to look at it. When they looked at it, they uh, they swapped it. And the person behind the counter was relatively new. She was a female. She knew a little bit, but she wasn't the owner or anything. Well, when the guy left, the owner realized like, Five minutes later, like pretty quickly, he realized, but he didn't realize that, that guy was gone. He was gone with the wind. And the way they set it up was there was another girl in there. And what she did was she started a little scene just for one second for the person that was behind the counter to look. That's all I had to do is make a noise, had her look. And in that second, when she looked over at the other person making a scene, the switch happened. I tell you guys some of my old heist tricks, but I don't want to give you guys any fucking ideas. <laughs> I got some pretty cool tricks too. Um, that I used to do similar to that. Got five hundred of blade show today in my hand for a couple minutes until I put them back. Yeah, which one was your favorite? I love personally the non flipper XM eighteen, probably the best. But the three inches, I I love, you know, pretty much equally. You know, I do like them better than the flipper. But even the flipper version, like like Mike Emler, he's got my XM18 3-inch right, or 3.5 right now. I let him review it because he hadn't tried any of the new ones with the triways. And even he said, because the last time he tried one, it was an older one. And he said the flipper sucked. Well, getting mine in hand, he's like, oh, wow, this is nine-day difference. It's way better. The way hinders are now are nothing like they were in the past. So, you know, he, <clears throat> they flip really good. Yeah, they're, they're things a little pokey, but they're they're good. What's up, Knife Sergeant? Knife Sergeant's in the house. Definitely go check his channel out. Trying to get down to the bottom. We got a lot of comments. Seems logical. Says it'd be interest. I'd be interested in hearing your heist tricks. And I promise that if I ever use them, I will use them for good. Maybe towards the end. Maybe towards the end, we'll, we'll talk. The one I just told, I've done similar stuff like that, but um, never with a watch. It was with gold and rings and shit like that. But I got way more stories than that, though. I used to be in the the golden diamond business. A lot of people say, <clears throat> which is halfway true, that you can't get, like, okay, so, like, if you go and buy something, right, and it has diamonds in it, the diamonds aren't worth nothing when you leave. Well, that's halfway true. So if you take your golden diamond necklace to a pawn shop, they will not give you money for the diamonds shit some of them will rip the fucking diamonds out and then weigh the gold because they don't, don't care about that they only care about the gold weight so when they weigh it they're gonna weigh it and they're going to give you x amount of dollars you know so many dollars per gram of gold blah 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 now if you ever take anything in like that make sure you know gold prices first before you go in there because they're gonna try to rip you off if you at least know gold dollars, then after he weighs it, you can at least see what he's going to make. And if he's making more than you off of your own shit, don't take it. Because most places, if you know your shit, they'll, they'll make, they'll make way less than you, you know, like off of a $150 item, they'll make 40 bucks or something. You got to allow them to make something off of it, but they're going to make spot prices off of that gold. So anyways, but the diamonds. If you know somebody, you can definitely sell diamonds. <laughs> I used to sell the shit out of diamonds. Now, the thing with diamonds is that the only ones that are going to be any good for any value is a half a carat or better. Um, Between like $40, $50 for a half a carat up to $80 to $100 for a full carat. Now, that's for just any fucking diamond. Now, if you get a good diamond, like good quality diamond, and you can prove it's good quality diamond, obviously, you can get a lot more money. You know, especially if it's like a carrot or two carrots, the bigger it is, the better. But I'm talking about in just half carrot form. So if you have like 10 half carrots or 
10 one carats, then it's going to be around that price. If it gets bigger than that, then the price goes way up, especially for good quality. But now them little tiny specs, if you know somebody, you can even sell those. I used to sell bags of them, of those little tiny fuckers. You can barely see them. And you still get the same value, though. You know, they just weigh it by the carat, but, you know, little time and diamonds at a time. <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry, Mom. You're saying goodbye, Mom? I love you. Thank you for joining. Sorry I'm fucking talking my old heist stories. <laughs> love you, Mom. Um, My wife was mad at you, Treat. Had to jump online and get that smooth Kaiser Vanguard. Hazel, hey, you showed last night. Oh, you were talking about this bad boy. <laughs> I actually got... I'm going to talk about this thing here in a little bit. So, but before that, I want to say this. I want to, it's not really an apology, but I have to fix something I said, and I'm going to say it a few times now since I actually gave the credit to the wrong people. So in the video of the unboxing of all the Kaisers, I gave credit to Kaiser, which I shouldn't have. You know, it's just my mistake. I was putting them both together. So. Mojave Outdoors is its own company. They're buying the Kaisers and then selling them. So they are the ones that are sending me the knives. So they're the ones supporting my channel. And that's awesome. They've sent me a bunch of stuff and they've been supporting me. And I love that. And uh, I appreciate that. So it wasn't right for me to give credit to Kaiser for something that they did. And it's not like they got upset or anything like that. But I, I realized that after, you know, they kind of just said, you know, like, hey, you know, that came from us, not from Kaiser or whatever. And then I felt bad. Like, oh, man, I gave, you know, you know how it is. You know, you wind up giving credit to somebody else and it wasn't due. So they were the ones that were paying attention. They were the ones that sent me the note. They were the ones that sent me the knife. So shout out to Mojave Outdoors for supporting Neves Knives. Definitely get your Kaisers from them. I keep telling you guys, they have great deals. Like, go on their, their website. They have tons of deals. And sometimes they have deals for just one knife, sometimes multiple knives. But they got the Kaisers. And they're really cool, great, you know... It, at least from my perspective, they've been awesome to work with. And like I said, they got good deals. And yes, I'm the asshole there. I'm the asshole. What's up, Evil E? 30 people need to hit the like button. Yeah, hit the damn like button, you guys. Don't you guys want to see these knives? Don't you guys want to help me out with my goals? I got goals. My next goal is 10. Well, it's really 9K first. But we're trying to get to 10K. 10, think about that. A knife channel at 10,000 followers, that's a, that's so awesome for the knife community. So help me out. Drop me some likes. If you're not subbed, hit that sub button. It helped me out. I'd really appreciate it. And help me get to my damn goal. Six more to the Rockstead. Where is old Rock? Oh, Rocky's right here. Rocky ain't never too far away. I see 33 likes, but I got to keep hitting the thing to, to see. Okay, so N690, right? Let's talk about N690. So I always said, you mean 10K? <laughs> yeah, 10,000 addicts. Exactly. That's why I need, need 10,000 addicts to sub to my damn channel. Also, I'm going to talk about the other channel I'm going to start in this video i'm going to talk about it here in a few minutes so stay tuned if you care it's not knife related so if you don't care i'll i'll explain it quick but we'll just bring old rocky out early i don't know is it 45 mm, there's old rocky did you guys at knife show or blade show get to hold any rockies that's the question did you guys get to hold any damn rockies and i know some of you guys were like really um wanting to get your hands on a demco did you guys get your hands on any of them demcos did you guys get to experience the awesomeness of the demco <laughs> Ten thousand story junkies what's up richie b what's up brother all right okay so 
We're going to go to N690. Remember, I still got to talk about some of these Kaisers because I figured, found something out about these things, and I'm still confused on that all of the crazy smooth ones have in common, but the other ones don't. I'll talk about that in a second. Everybody I talked to today were, were sad. You couldn't make I'm too. They're sad? Shane, they're sad? Come on now. I'm sad. I was pissed. I got to watch like 15 videos of my friends taking, uh, you know, taking these shots like this. You know, they're sitting there with their knives <laughs> on Instagram, all with each other, arms around each other. I'm sitting there like, damn it, I want to go. I should be standing right there. Okay, so N690. Before I read this thing, so I went and read this thing about N690. And I always said that it reminded me of, and this is purely off of use and sharpening, it always reminded me of VG10. Now, when I went to look it up, it was saying that it was similar to 440C. That's what it started saying at first. And they were talking about it being similar to 440C. And it said like that uh, it has 1.07% carbon content. 440C has 0.95% carbon content. <clears throat> if you don't know what that means, it doesn't matter. The point is, is that it's actually more similar to VG10 than 440C. And uh, it wound up saying that towards the end of the thing they wrote. So I felt pretty good about thinking that, you know, because I always thought of it, of, you know, very similar to VG10. And then after reading that, you know, it kind of collaborated. So if you ever wonder about N690, it is very similar to VG10. Now, Nitro V. I'm sorry about the cough drop in my mouth, guys. And you guys, you know you guys could probably hear it. Truth be told. 440C VG10 with 4CM and 9CR aren't all that different. Well, listen to this. I got it pulled up. I'm going to read it to you guys. So Nitro V is very similar to AEBL, having the same CR <clears throat> and SI along with a minor difference in whatever. The nitrogen content is the same as 14C28N. And I always said that, that Nitro V reminds me. I know you guys have heard me say that. You guys had to have. I've always said that. When people ask me, what do you think about Nitro V? I say, I think it's pretty similar to 14C. Now, which may be simply due to its limits in nitrogen additions with conventional steel production. You can read about those limits, blah, 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 blah. And it talks all about how similar it is. Now, it says, where is that? Okay, so it's similar to 14C, 13C26. I've never even heard of that, but AEBL are basically, they're almost the same. When you look at, maybe I can pull this up and let you guys see it. When you look at this content chart, you guys probably can't see it, but they are super similar. Look at them numbers. They're very, very similar. So that's an, that's one reason why I like Nitro V so much is because it's so similar to that. Now, AEBL was made originally for razor blades. So was 14C28N. They're made for razor blades, and they were made to be pumped out as little blades. Now, obviously, them as razor blades would be great razor blades, but as a knife steel, a forged or you know, a knife steel that's heat treated to, you know, a proper way, it's going to have way better performance than it would be as a razor blade being heat treated, you know, in a conveyor or whatever. But it just lets you know where it came from and why it's so awesome, in my opinion, be when we're talking about production knives. Now, obviously, uh, if it's able to be done, like that in a razor blade setting than in a pocket knife when you when you where you take a little bit more care with your heat treats and everything it's going to have a lot better performance but it at least gives them the ability to make a lot at once without it being bad that's sometimes the problem with some of these super steels is that yeah they're great 
if they're being done one, two, three, five at a time. But when you start talking about doing hundreds at a time, you, you know, the, the steel has to be okay with that. It's not like you can just say like, oh, you know, I'm just going to do a thousand at once. It won't be a big deal. You know, the steel has to be able to be heat treated like they're doing. Uh, AEBL is common for custom knife makers that make fixed blade bushcraft knives. Yes, they are Hollywood. And also there's some knife makers, some custom knife makers that use them in their folders too. I, what was it? I, I reviewed one. I can't remember the name of it, but it was sweet. It was awesome. I even sharpened it. It takes, and the, another thing about AEBL is because just like 14C, because they were made for like razor blades, you want, they, they're, they perform the best at a really fine edge. So they can take it and make super deep, thin hollow grinds with that steel, and it'll perform really good. It's a tough steel, you know, so on and so forth, but it makes it to where we can get those nice, thin edges and sharpen them up really good, and it's going to perform really good because it's made for that. You know, it's just like some seals are made for abuse, you know, for fixed blades, for chopping and stuff. Some knives or some steel is made for razor, you know, for that cutting, very thin, you know, ground edge. It's protruding. It gets bad and it's often painful. I don't know what that means. Maybe I, is Talica out of here? I'm sorry, Talica. I didn't see you were out of here. Well, I'm on my phone is dead. You need to plug in. Damn it. You're out of here. All right, bud. Well, thanks for joining, man. A lot of it also depends on the way the steel is made in the factory and the different processes that are applied to the steel formula. Absolutely, Todd. I'm glad you said that because exactly, you know, it does depend on, on the steel that they're doing, the process that they're doing, every and the amount, right? It's like, like say if you're doing five at a time of X steel, doing 20 at a time might not work out as good. So yeah, all because like some of the, um, I mean, I I've seen, and I don't know what some of the companies are using, but I'm sure you guys have seen where they're using those big heat tree things where they're, they can put like a thousand of them in at once. Well, that might be good for some steels and be just fine, but some steels might not be able to, to heat treat that good in a big setting like that where the temperature isn't perfect every corner of that that um you know that heat treat machine can't even think of the name of them right now the forge or whatever one minute knife reviews is in here what's up one minute what's up bud why is everyone bullying gordon why are you guys bullying gordon did he go to Blade Show without us? Is that why we're bullying him? Because if so, I might just join in. <laughs> What's up, JN? Love the initials. So that gets down to Nitro V and N690 of why they are awesome. Now, we're going to talk about the difference between a freehand edge versus a fixed edge angled system edge what are the differences i think a lot of people know like the little things right like well one a person's holding the knife and the other one the 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 clamp is holding the knife you know because a fixed angled system is going to be a system that sits there it holds the knife like a clamp and then you take the stone to the blade and a freehand edge is going to be you taking the knife to the stone so two differences, but when you break it down like to other differences, there are going to be quite a bit. Well, obviously, um, freehanding is going to be a little harder, a little more difficult. Now, anybody getting a fixed angle system, you can't just think like, oh, I got a system, so now I'm going to sharpen up a good knife. A lot of knives are damaged that way, a lot of them. and you know, you can't blame the person, you know, they just, because the thing is you have to at least know the, like how and what you're doing, like what it takes to sharpen a knife, like from the grit to the burr, to the bevel, the angle, knowing a little bit of that stuff will help you use a fixed angle system. Now, just knowing a little bit about that 
you can use a fixed angle system, but there's still little details that if you don't know, like put it this way, somebody just jumping on a fixed angle system isn't going to do nowhere near as good of a job as somebody who is good with a fixed angle system. So it still does take good technique and knowing what you're doing. Now, freehand is a lot harder now. <clears throat> not only do you have to know all those details, but you also have to do them yourself. You have to hold your angle yourself, do the pressure yourself, you know, and pay attention to every detail, every movement, every rock, every everything matters. But a fixed angled system, and now if we talk about both of them being like, per or you know, before that, let's talk about the problems with both. Okay, so the great question, Hollywood Tactical says, knees and eyes, doing freehand, how do you follow the angle when nearly every factory edge has no consistent angle to the edge, along the edge, and from each side of the apex? That is such a great question, because he's 100% right. Nearly every single knife you get, the, the, the grind of which the knife is ground, I'm going to pull out a knife, something you guys can see, or you know, something nice and big. The wee malice. Okay, so when they grind this side, right, and just this side, not even talking about the other side, just this side, there's going to be inconsistencies. And then when you flip it over, there's going to be inconsistencies. And sometimes just from one side to the other right here is inconsistent. It's not perfect. So when you're freehanding, there, with, with a fixed angle system, it's set. That's it, right? It's set to the angle, and you go with that angle. That's all you can do, right? You know, obviously, you do a bunch, but I'm just saying, like, you take the angle that you set, and that's the angle you sharpen it at. With freehand, you can manipulate a little bit. Like, say if you notice the tip, right, is a little thicker on one side than another. Well, then when you're coming through when sharpening, you can, at the very tip, just tilt right at the end to give a little tilt at the end on one side to make it even it out from one side to the other. So there's little tricks to freehanding. Now, if it's a fixed angle system, there's nothing you can do. It, if it's off from one side to the other, you will see it. Now, a lot of times with even freehand, if there's one side's off or if the tip's a little off on one side or by the choil, you're going to see it too. It just depends on whether or not you're going to work on that. Because a lot of times when you're free-handed, you don't want to do that. Because, yeah, you might be able to do it through the first stone, but to repeat that same movement through every stone, it's, it's going to get hard. It can get hard. <clears throat> but the problems with, or, you know, let me finish saying what I'm saying. Um, but just identifying where they're at and what you need to do you can adjust your angles and do your best. Basically, you're not always going to be per. You're not always going to be able to do a perfect symmetrical edge on a, a blade that's ground off. You just can't. There's nothing you can do about it. Sometimes you can adjust things and do the best you can to make it look good, but sometimes there's not much you can do. Right? You can you can help a little bit but not perfectly. Sometimes you can make it look perfect because it's not that bad, but it just depends. But the problems with freehanding is the time and effort you have to put into learning and holding the angle. Your hands can get sore. It can get messy, so on and so forth. And even learning the process through the stones, that's why it's good to find somebody who's already doing it and listen to them about what stones to get and things to get now with a fixed angled system oh prices both of them are expensive so buying a fixed angled system can be a lot of money especially after buying all the attachments buying all the attachments all the stones and if they come with these stones then you might need to get these other stones which the stones aren't cheap now free handing might be a little cheaper but you through all the stones you buy you're going to wind up paying the same thing both of them are going to cost basically the same thing now with freehand, though, your stones are probably going to last a little longer 
because of the fixed angled system, they're smaller. They're smaller stones if you're doing the same amount of sharpening. Now, the positives with both is a fixed angled system, you don't have to think. You don't have to hold the angle. You can just let the machine hold the angle. And all you, if you know how to, you know, watch your grit and get to the burr, you can flip it and do the same thing. It's it's pretty simple to use when you understand sharpening. If you understand it, with freehand, it's not gonna be you. You, but however, when you learn it, there's something so. I'm not, I don't want to say honorable, but rewarding. There's something so rewarding about learning how to freehand because it's kind of like riding a bike. Once you learn it and you get it down, you can keep repeating it, and it's very easy. And the more you do it, the better you get. Um, kind of like riding a bike, like I said, you know, like once you learn how to ride a bike, you learn how to dr ride down the street without falling, and you're good. But then the more you do it, the faster you can go. Soon you can start hitting jumps. Soon you start doing bunny hops and riding wheelies and indoing and all that shit. But that takes time. Same thing with sharpening. It just takes time, but it is so rewarding once you do. And you can sharpen anywhere. Now, I know you can bring fixed angled systems with you if you want to, but I can literally just bring one stone with me and it can be a small stone. It can be a big stone. It can be anything. And just bring one stone with me anywhere and I can sharpen a knife anywhere. You know, uh, some people do have a, 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 a case where they keep their fixed angled system and that's badass. But, you know, both of them have positives and negatives. But with the edge, the difference, the main difference is going to be that a fixed angled system leaves a perfect edge. Now, you're probably thinking, that's awesome, right? Not so fast. A perfect edge isn't always great. Now, and what I mean is that if you have like, Hollywood was saying, if you have a grind that's off from one side to the other and you do a 20 degree angle on both sides, you got a chance that you're going to have one tiny bevel on one side and one fat bevel on the other side. You might have an edge that looks like a snake all the way down it because the grind is off all the way down it. So there, it literally is perfect. So if it's a perfect angle, and the blade isn't ground perfectly, you will see that with a fixed angled system every time. And even though the edge is nice and flat and it looks flat all the way down, it has waves in it. Now, if the knife is ground perfect, it's going to look perfect. As, as good as that knife is ground is as good as a fixed angled system edge can be. A lot of companies are doing great. So I'm not trying to say every time it's going to look warped or something. I'm just saying it happens. It does. Now, with a freehand edge, you can manipulate that a little bit. Like if I start working on one side and I flip it over and it doesn't match, I instantly change my angle right there before I go farther because I can tell right away it ain't matching. Now, on the heel of the blade, say if it's really tiny, well, I can, like I said, do that little dip move by the heel and work on the heel a little bit of extra time to make it a little bit bigger to make it match. So, you know, even though the one is perfect, sometimes that perfectness backfires and can bite you in the ass. So, and any, if somebody does really, really good freehand work, they can make it pretty much just as flat, just as perfect and I've probably been talking way too much about this. Beating dead horses. Sometimes you got to beat a horse to death, though. Okay. Um, The new stainless Civita. Oh, I got it on me right here. You guys seen that, right? Bang, this new Civivi. I'll tell you what. This thing's pretty awesome. Look at how everything is just so clean. I'm going to focus on it. Focus on it, camera. Maybe like this. You see how the pivot's gray? And so is the hardware. It looks so clean. It's pretty awesome. And after getting it, it wasn't... I mean, it's not very smooth out of the box. But just like with anything, 
after you start flicking and playing with it, it gets a lot smoother. And it has gotten very smooth. It is super thin behind the edge. I'm telling you, if you wanted a kite fin but could not get one, if you wanted a kite fin, one of this is very, very, very similar. Like, I almost feel like it is the kite fin. It is smaller, but they're very, very similar. Yeah, the kite fin's a tiny bit bigger, but they're overwhelmingly sim similar. Almost doesn't look like a Civivi. Right. It looks like a Wii. Right. Um, my Triway Jurassic compared to my Gen 4 XM is night and day. Yeah, absolutely. That's what um, that's what Mike Emmett was saying about my Triway that I sent him. He said, because <laughs> that was the biggest complaint always, that the hinders didn't flip. So taking somebody who's tried those before, the hinders that didn't flip versus one that does. Yeah, night and day. I don't know who Quentin is. Who's Quentin? Anyways, so um, if you ever want to break in a detent quickly, looks like a Wivivi. Yes, it does. It does look like a Wivivi. If you ever want to break in a detent quick, here's a little trick. So if you ever gotten a knife and the detent is just... Well, two things. One, the detent might be a little too strong. Or two, when you're trying to drop it, it's just like it's not dropping it's, or it's coated. That's another thing. It's coated, like kind of like the Kaisers I got. One was coated, one wasn't. The one that wasn't is very, very smooth. The one with the coated blade, it's very smooth, but you can tell the, 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 the satin blade is smoother than the, the coated blade. So and once that coated blade breaks the detent in once the detent is broken through the coated blade and makes a little track it'll be extremely smooth just like the satin finish now how do you rush that how do you make that happen there's a trick so what you do is you open your knife okay you open your knife and you take your knife now you take your fingers that little dot right there in front of my finger the detent ball place your finger there and pinch Okay, so now you're pinching the detent ball onto the blade. And then you just take the blade and you go back and forth. And you put pressure on it. You can put minimal or a lot of pressure. And you can let it go past that little notch right there. And you can do it right there really good. Kind of break in a little track right there. But mostly what you're trying to do is break the track in on the flat part. And you go back and forth, and then you can even go like this. If it, you're having trouble with it opening, like it's just too strong of a detent, this is a time where you can close it and open it with pressure on that right there. And you just go back and forth. And what you're doing is you're breaking a little track in to the steel with the ceramic ball. And you'll find that after doing that about a hundred times back and forth, back, it does take a little bit, of course, because you're basically fast forwarding time. You're putting, instead of sitting here opening it a thousand times, you just simulate a thousand times. But since you're putting pressure on the detent ball, it's simulating like 10,000 times without making the lock bar go on the tang of the blade. Because that is what's going to really like fast forward life of the knife is the lock bar going under the blade and locking open. You know, but we're skipping that and we're just breaking the detent ball in. And we're just going to basically simulate a lot of time of it opening and closing and even more because you're putting pressure. But I've done that to a lot of knives and made them stupid smooth when they had coatings on the blade or they were just a little rough. Sometimes the satin finish that's on a blade, the, the belt satin finish. Is a little rough, and you can actually feel it. The detent ball. You ever open up a knife and felt it felt like kind of like a zipper, zzz, zzz, and it you know does that. That's the satin finish. Who is Gordon? I don't know what we're talking about. You guys are just sitting here having conversations without me. All right, Russ says no. I didn't see them. We doesn't usually do substandard work though. Not good if they are starting to. I don't know what that means. No, I didn't see any news on the Kershaw knives. 
Um, ZT has a couple that they put out for 2021. I'm not a big fan of them, to be honest. ZT makes incredible knives, but I, in my opinion, they shit the bed. They shit the bed on ZT this year. Hopefully Kershaw didn't, though, because I would love to see some really good quality USA-made Kershaws make a, a bare-knuckle two or a knockout two, or it makes just a whole new knife, but USA-made that are similar to those. Hey! With no assist. Beast Blades, thank you, man. Go up. 75 watching and 57 likes. Hit that like button. Get me to my goals, my 10,000 sub goals. The Wii knives I have seen that are going to be released soon look more like Civibis to me. Well, they got high-end materials. You got to think it's still the same company. So, yeah, they might, but I will give them credit for this. They're making knives that look extremely useful. Like, let's just pull out this button lock really quick. The Elementum. This is such a useful shape, grind, everything is done so good, specifically for use. So you can make an extravagant fucking lines everywhere knife that's super uncomfortable in your hand, doesn't cut for shit, clip sucks, and pay, you know, high material, you know, money or value. Or you get a knife that is a very useful blade shape, very useful grind, useful clip, Great action. I like that uh, personally, but, but yes, yeah, so they're the same company, you know, so it is going to do that. You're going to see some of their knives are going to be their budget materials or their budget knives, the high end materials or their high end knives. But you, you guys can't be too mad at that because think about all the knives that you love as a budget knife that you would love to see as a high end knife. You would love to see titanium. You'd love to see M390. Now think of all the M390 titanium knives that you would love to see as a budget knife, right? There's so many of them. Um, I will say the Kershaw Shuffle 1 is a great little folder. It was my daily EDC for a time HCR, but they're cheap. They're, they're good for that. They're good for their, their I, I want to call them very budget blades, right? The, the $30 and under blades or $40 and under blades. The Kershaw is great for that and for people that walk into Walmart, right? Which I think that's awesome because how do you get people started in the knives unless if you get them to buy one at Walmart? <laughs> evil opinion. They weren't meant to be evil, but when you come to a knife live streams and ask some messed up medical question, how is everyone supposed to respond? I had somebody chew me out in a comment earlier and uh, i think it i don't know i thought it was kind of funny so i did a cold steel video uh, a while back and i must have said in the video and remember this was a while back so i don't remember everything i said but i remember how i felt and how i feel because i'm just telling my truth you know my truth anyway so i must have said um yeah i'm what did i say he said that I said, uh, oh, I'm not a real big fan of them, but I like them and blah, blah, blah. And he was like, you know, you sound like you're on the fence. Get off the fence. Just pick one. Do you either like it or not? <laughs> and I'm like, listen, man, I fucking I like cold steel knives, but I don't have any. And every time when it comes down to me buying this knife or a cold steel, I always pick the other knife. So just by the way I buy my knives, that shows you that I must, I like, you know, I must not be that big of a fan of them. Now, I do like them. I love cold steel knives. I, fuck, they're one of my most recommended knife is like a cold steel code for. Especially when people say I want a work knife that's very tough. But I have to go with what I wind up doing personally. If nine times out of 10, I get a fucking frame lock knife from somebody else and not from them, then when I could have bought that, that knife from them, you know, that says something. So I'm just being honest. Like, I like them a lot. I love them. And I'm going to eventually get a cold steel. But as of right now, I don't own one cold steel, not one cold steel. I'd like to, but I don't. So that's. When I could own one, and I what would, what would I look like sitting there telling you guys in a cold steel video with four cold steel knives? I'm sitting there telling you how much I love them, 
right? Oh, I love them. They're my favorite knives. I fucking love them. They're so great. How many do you got? None. <laughs> you know, I do like them. I think they're a solid knife and I do need to buy some, but I, I like, you know, other locks a little bit more than I like a back lock. I'm just not the biggest backlock fan. Now, I do agree. It's the strongest locking mechanism ever before the shark lock. But sometimes I don't need that. Sometimes I'd rather have the faster action than the backlock. But then there's times I think a backlock is great. That's why I would love to own one, but I don't yet. So, anyways, he was mad because I was on the fence. Or because I sounded like I was on the fence and he, yeah, whatever. Uh, Jared is the thin behind the edge diva, just like lefty is like the deep. Oh my God. That's hilarious. Listen, motherfucker. I like thin behind the edge for certain knives. Not all knives, right? I'm flicking an 80, 20. You think this thing's thin behind the edge? No, go fuck yourself. But lefty is definitely the detent queen. <laughs> Definitely. I got I got to be honest. I love the guy to death. I love the guy. I love the guy. I love his channel. I think he's hilarious. I will always send him knives. I have so much love for the guy. But watching some of his videos, I lose a piece of my soul every time. <laughs> I do. But I love it. I love it. It's kind of like, I don't know. I get entertained. I think it's hilarious. And I love the guy. I hope he's not in here. He's in his own life, but he's got lefty issues, right? He's got lefty issues. I'm not left-handed. And I, for some reason, don't have the lefty issues. He has now. I understand what he's saying because you put your finger on the lock bar, but there's a lot of knives that don't have that issue, but he has flipper issues, right? Like he'll grab a knife like this, right? And go like this. And be like, the detent sucks. The detent sucks. Even though he can easily flip it. All right? And he'll flip it every time other than that. But then he'll... Now, I understand some detents do suck. Right? Some detents suck. But, man, just sometimes it's like fucking adjust the pivot. Or put some oil on it. Or fucking learn how to flick it. Right? Some knives you do got to use. Metal Complex is in here. What is going on today? Holy cow. We were just about to talk all kinds of crap about you, Metal Complex. I'm glad you're here. <laughs> I'm joking. Oh, is that me you're talking about? It is now. It is now. <laughs> you just jumped into a shit show and you don't even know it. So, Metal Complex. You guys ready to roast Metal Complex? We just got done roasting old lefty. So, if you guys got anything... <laughs> You guys want Mel Complex to know. Make sure you say it in the comments right now. No, I'm just joking. I love Metal Complex. I definitely love his channel. He definitely had a big influence on us and our channel and even a lot of our subs. He helped us out growing and, you know, especially when we were just a, a little itty bitty channel. He was there for us and backed us up and shouted us out. And I can't thank him enough. I'll always remember that. But... Here comes the roast. So, Metal Complex, the fucking guy who never uses a knife, but yet everybody takes his damn opinion on it. What do you guys think? I should be roasting you guys, not even him. The guy's never used a knife in his life. In his life. But you guys take his opinions on knives. I'll never get that. I'll never get that. What else? What else do we got for him? The guy. <laughs> Mr. Big Swole over here, fucking counting calories, getting ripped, and <laughs> he's got everybody fucking fat shaming themselves because of his good looking ass, and everybody's listening to him about knives. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I don't understand the Gordon thing. Well, I guess there goes old theory on Gordon being MC. Oh, I got you guys. You guys thought Gordon was MC? Maybe he was. Maybe that's what. And then MC runs around fucking 
with a guy named Gordon as his thumbnail, acting like a Gordon, but really it's Metal Complex. And everybody knows it, but nobody says anything. <laughs> this doesn't feel like a Rosie just saying. Just, just wait. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck i'm lefty but i'm amb ambidextrous yeah okay these two guys are the same guy if you guys don't know metal complex is gordon and gordon is metal complex it's the same guy just pretending that's how he sneaks into everybody's lives acting like he's somebody else and what he does is he starts talking shit about himself just to see what people say about himself just to see what people say, which is kind of hilarious. I should probably do the same thing. <laughs> what does everybody say about me when I'm not there? MC turned all my cash into knives. Yeah, that's another thing. Yeah, the guy who fucking gets everybody to buy these damn knives and divorces across the board. You know, we got, you know, you know, MC's got about 15 divorces under his belt that he uh, helped influence from guys going broke, not paying car notes because they had to get a hinderer. Where is my fucking hinderer? What does that look like, MC? What does that look like to you? Does that look like a titanium XM24? Do you not think you didn't have any influence on this? Huh? What's wrong with you, man? We need to get phone numbers for people that need help. I take zero responsibility for the divorces. 100% responsibility for the knife purchases, though. It's all the same thing, man. It's all in one. I had somebody earlier telling me, he's like, listen, I bought that knife you recommended, but hey, I'm going to give my girlfriend your number. I need you to explain it to her. Oh, that's hilarious. Oh man. And and the 8020 whole oh, metal complex. I, I you know what? And it wasn't even the people that got influenced to buy the knives. It's the people you influenced to buy the knives that couldn't buy the knives because of all the other influenced people that bought all the knives. So now you got people sitting at home wanting to flick a shark lock, but can't. Because old MC got them sold out. Sold out. <laughs> no affiliate links for divorce lawyers. On MC. <laughs> oh, it'll help with the inflation on the way. <laughs> You're right. It'll help with the inflation on the way. <laughs> links are in the description. <laughs> That's going to be the it's going to be the next disclaimer. The next disclaimer is I am not responsible for your divorces or your relationships that my, your knife purchases might affect after watching my video content. <laughs> disclaimer. <laughs> so now where did it go? So now it's the MC effect on the Shabazz effect. Yeah, Shabazz definitely had a lot of effects for Old MC, I, I, I have to say, I think he might have him beat. I think he might have him beat. At this point, the way he's growing, and congratulations to him on his growth. I hate what happened, but I love, you know, his growth and how he just shot through the sky. That I, I honestly, you know, and maybe there was another channel, but in all reality, I don't think there was another channel that shot like that. In the knife community, um, when I look at our channel, I, I I feel like we're so blessed, and we are, and a lot of it thanks to him. But man, his channel has just skyrocketed in, in an insane way, which is a blessing to to all the community because it really shows how many. Because we all know there's so many of us, right? But it really shows how many there is, you know, and in that short of time, how fast it grew. Think about like how many other, how big these channels can get because the knife community hasn't really been around. I mean, it's been around for a long time, but on social media 
channels, podcasts, etc. It hasn't been around a crazy long time. So it really shows what the future is going to be like. Hopefully. I hope so. Oh, bro, you guys are blowing up shirts. I appreciate that. I, I, you know, we're our next goal is the 10K. We're not even 9,000. We're not even looking at 9,000. Fucking right past 9,000, right to 10. Um, I think, to be honest, you know, just uh, to spit a little factual uh, information, in the last 28 days, we've gained 800 subscribers. So in my, that's really good, in my opinion. I remember, because when you're, when your channel's really small, that's when it takes the most time. You know, obviously, you know, getting to 30 subscribers and 40 and 50 and getting to that 100 mark. Once you get a couple thousand, that's when it starts picking up. And everybody knows the Internet's like a wave. It just is. You're either down or you're up, down or you're up. And when the wave comes, you got to jump on. That's the secret. I don't know about the secret, but that's one of the secrets to you know, social media and the internet and stuff. You got to jump on that wave when it comes, but when it's down, it's what you do. That's what matters because everybody can be, you know, do great when they're up here on top of the wave, but it's what you do when you're down because when you're down and you're, you're, you know, fighting to, to, you know, for views and fighting for subs and still pushing content. Waiting for that next wave. That's what matters. Because having consistent content is going to be what makes or breaks you. If you don't, if you're not consistent and you don't put the work in, you, you can guarantee like Metal Complex, he's put a lot of a lot of work in. A lot, a lot of work. And he's definitely influenced me to to put in even more work. This is what I said to myself was how many videos does he do? I'll do double that. That's what I said. How many lives does he do a week? Well, I'm doing two of them then. <laughs> oh. You think I grow fast? Watch out for knees. Yeah, I, I hope so. I hope so. I'm coming for you. I'm coming for you right now. I'm just letting you know. I'm coming for you. But, uh, but yeah, it's... And man, I, I hate what happened to, and you know, I don't want to sit here and go all about it, you know, but I hate what happened to his channel. I really hope that everybody is, and I really mean this guys, I hope everybody is supporting him while he's down right now because he'll be back up, but support him right now while he's down, whether it's through Patreon, his links, whatever it takes. You know, because he's still pushing it. He's still working hard. He's still doing it. He hasn't skipped a beat, even though he's been shot in the leg. He's wounded. He's at the back of the field, dragging one leg. <laughs> he's still pushing along. So give him a hand. Definitely give him a hand. Yeah, I doubt that, MC. I doubt the applaud will be there, but... but uh I'm sure, I'm sure it'll, hey, rip for knees, fucking past me. <laughs> That's how it'll be. <laughs> oh. Yeah, you know, him. it can happen to any one of us. It really can. He was, I, I heard what he said about that, you know, and he's 100% right. It can happen to any one of us. I know other channels that have been, you know, that the same things happened to that I couldn't like right now I could look at his channel and assume, right? There's things I could assume not being a hundred percent sure though. There's other channels. I can't even assume anything. Like it just doesn't even make sense to me. Sometimes you got to wonder like if it was a mistake and sometimes it is a lot of times it is a lot of times as long as, you know, if you fight back, you'll, you'll you know, you'll get the upper hand, but a lot of people just give up. You know, they look at it and say, what can I do? Right. What can I do? It's hard to communicate with them. To be honest, if something happened like that right now, I don't even know how to communicate with them. I'm glad that he's figured out a way at least a little bit. Hopefully it's a human, probably not, but I'm, I think he'll get it figured out. I, I pray and hope he does. And, um, you know, I hope he's got everybody's support because we need each other. I, everybody's got to realize that. We give each other a lot of shit, right? We mess with each other. I mess with everybody out of love. I love everybody. But we, 
we have to stick together, right? Our community exists because of all of us. You know, whether if you like this and he likes this and you don't like what he does, it doesn't matter, right? That's not the point. Point is, is we're a community. At the very least, we have to protect that, you know? So I'm not going anywhere. I'll be here for the next 10 years. That's awesome. You should be. Every, all of us should be. I mean, it'd be a tragedy to see this, you know, every, and if you think about it, look at how it's grown and just, just the time I've been here, it has grown massively. So imagine 10 years from now. Right. And there's so many people and everybody knows these people that are knife people, but aren't part of the community. Everybody knows those people. And it's only time before they join. And once you do, like a lot of people say, come for the knives, you stay for the people, because that's what it's about. It's about the people and the brotherhood, brother, sisterhood. I don't know. I'm trying to, you know, get everybody in the, you know, the subject brothers and sisterhoods. We'll just call it brotherhood. Everybody knows what it means. The knife community is amazing and everyone is like brothers and sisters. It's awesome. Absolutely. And my thing says I got 3% girls watching. 3% of the ladies. And they come here for the biceps. <laughs> oh, my people are awesome. They are. Everybody's awesome. This community's amazing. I get a few knuckleheads here and there that that uh, want to fight with me. I just, I'll, I'll entertain them for a second, you know, and talk to them. Sometimes I, I actually do really talk to them. When they're really trolling, I just troll them right back. They don't know how to, they don't know what to say and they give up. But uh but for the people that actually mean it, like cuz there are some people that actually mean it. Like to be honest, I'm not going to say who it was cuz honestly I don't remember, but the other day I had a guy go off on me because of Metal Complex. Can you believe that shit? I had a guy go off on me because of Metal Complex. <laughs> he went crazy on me. And it, but he wasn't like crazy, but he wrote a really long message, a really long message. And then in it, he said, um, sorry, I'm not really mad at you. I'm really mad at MC. I'm just taking it out on you. <laughs> yeah, really? Metal yes, really. And it was kind of, it was kind of funny because I kind of know what he meant. You know, and I don't know what it was about. I have no idea, but there's been times where I've watched something and it's just slightly irritated me, you know, like what, whatever it was. And then my remark to the next person, which I don't ever do that, but you know, you wind up, uh, taking it out on somebody else. And I don't think I ever do that, but I can understand it, I guess, where, you know, you've watched something else and then whatever. I don't, I can't imagine what, but some people in the community do take certain things seriously, like very, very seriously. Like I just said a second ago, sometimes watching lefties, I lose a piece of my soul sometimes watching this shit, even though I'll keep watching it and I love them to death and I love watching it a piece of my soul sometimes because of like watching him uh, chew out an action that's great or something, you know, like the knife's action is just great, but he's a lefty. So him trying to flick something that has amazing action and then he's shitting all over it because he's a lefty and he can't help it. And I understand that, he, you know, um, <laughs> and I keep sending him. I, I know, I know I've told you guys this shit. I keep sending him a, uh, an emoji of a graph. I told you guys that joke that uh, I told him because he got a, a Slim Midi, right? He got a Medford Slim Midi, uh, Tonto. And I told him, I said, you know, studies show that everybody, because he wound up getting two of them. But the first time he wound up getting the Tonto and he said, I just really like the Tonto, blah, blah, blah. And I said, you know, studies show that everybody that likes the Tonto, um, Slim Midi Marauder, has a small penis. And uh, then he wound up getting another one, right? Another one. And he didn't get a drop point, right? Think about that. He already had one Tonto Slimity, Slimity, and he gets another Tonto. Well, then when he was explaining himself, like, 
I didn't get the drop point because, man, I really like the, the Tonto. It's just sexy as hell. I wrote in his comments. I said, hey, man, why are you lying to these people? I said, just tell them the truth. They can handle it. You can't get a drop point. I said, the studies are out, man. I was like, they can handle it. You know, we're just spitting facts over here. The studies show that because of your small penis, you can't get a drop point version. You're going to get a Tonto. And now every time I, when I leave him a comment, I always make sure I leave him a little graph emoji. <laughs> <laughs> just for shits and giggles. And I'm obviously just trolling him and messing with him. I love the guy. He's awesome. I love his humor, and that's why, you know, I can goof with him like that. It's not that hard for a lefty to flip a frame lock. No, it's not. And that's another thing is that, like, the knives I sent him when he shit on the knives, which he thought that because of things I said back that I took it, like, a little too hard. And I honestly just goofing. <clears throat> I don't give a shit if you like some or not. I, I don't care anybody who... Sh I've sent knives to people and they've shit all over them. I don't care. Do that. I want people to see other perspectives. But um, when he was trying to uh, flip like one of my Shuros, or maybe it wasn't the Shuro. Yeah, I mean, Oh, yeah, it was the Shuro. He uh, was using the Shuro, and it probably just needs some KPL, but he was talking about it not being like false shutty or something, which it is, but it's like a slow and controlled action. But then... The React K2 is like, it, it's mine's a fall shut action. But for him, for some reason, maybe he was holding the lock bar and it was going slow. But in all reality, it just drops. But anyways, my point is, is that when he finger flicks a knife that's right-handed, left-handed, I know it can be tough because your thumb lands over the lock bar. I get that. You know, it's just like some people complaining because they're squeezing the lock bar when they try to flip it and it gets death lock. I get that. I get that. At this point, you are left-handed. You're either going to go right-handed or not, but man, he will shit all over a knife <laughs> because he's not good at it. And so, like I said, just sometimes it hurts my soul to see him shit all over a knife <laughs> that I love. It's like, the action's great on it. You're just a fucking lefty. But, yeah, I just goof with them, though. I understand. Sometimes there are people out there that are very picky, very, uh, um, I don't know the word of it, whatever, very picky. And he's one of them. He's very, very picky. I was giving that. He's very picky. I thought I shit on knives. Holy cow. Because I sometimes feel bad for calling out some knives, but, but I just call it as I see it. You know, if I see something wrong or whatever, I call it as I see it. Man. In fact, some right-hand knives are better being a lefty. Yeah, like the chef, right? Because the hole winds up being on this side. So, yeah, I love flicking this thing left-handed. You'd think he'd really love this thing, right? You think this would be like his all time knife? <laughs> uh, I like the Hulk, Hulk Mini RSK. I like it. I'll say this though, and listen, I'm not shitting on it, and I'm not saying that this is common. Um, I'll post 76's cut test video made me nervous though, because the, you know, and I know it was the factory edge and then, but it did take a couple, a few sharpenings to get some good steel out of that. And it still didn't have that great cut test results. And it boils down to the heat treat and yeah, there we go. Bang right there. Eat play go just said it super soft steel. Now, do I think that's common? For the Hogue Ritters, no. I But I don't know. It's possible. I would say if we had three or three of them or something and could see, you know, from three different people, three different batches or whatever, that'd be the only way to find out. My mini RSK kind of sucked. See, I like the knife a lot. I do love the knife. I think it's a great knife. But like I said, that one did scare me. My RSK seemed pretty decent, though. I'll say that. I had a big one. I have a mini here right now that's Q1 Fiends. 
Um, but, or wait, no, it's Floydian. Sorry, it's Floydians. And, um, I haven't used it. I used it once, but I mean, like, I haven't tested it. But mine, the one that I used to have was great. The steel felt fine. But that's one, you know, that's, you know, so, and I didn't do a controlled test. So I could be bullshitting. You know what I mean? Because it might feel just fine to me and it could sharpen up really good, but it could, you know, the, the, the cut test says it all or the, the, the actual HRC test. Sharpening can say a lot. It really can. But there are times where a steel feels good on the stone just because the heat treat is, I don't know, one or the other. Either one, it's okay, and the HRC is just bad or vice versa. Second, Malibu I've heard with lockstick. You know, lockstick usually breaks in, though. Lockstick because the Malibu has a button lock. So there's things you can do about that. Remember. That 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 lock is falling. It's like you know a plunge, and it's it's like cramming into a a groove. Eventually, it'll break that groove in. Also, another thing: always check for oil. Most of the time, you oiled your knife, and the oil leaked in. Listen to this, guys, because this happens a lot. I I literally solve this problem daily. A knife will have lock stick, and it's just because the oil leaked onto the lock face. With a button lock, it's the groove that the plunge that connected to the spring, you know, goes into for the lockup. Dry that off. Dry it off, and then check it. Use it a couple times after drying it off. And if it's really bad, put a little marker on it or some uh, lead. My AD-15 from Cold Steel S35N was really soft. Anybody else have that issue? Um, My AD-15 isn't a Cold Steel, so mine's good. I have one chip in the edge. I do have one major chip, though, I'll say that. It's pretty significant, Um, but it's still on its factory edge, so you can probably see the chip. See it right there. It's got that one chip right there. But it's still on the factory edge. So I, I can sharpen that out without a problem. So it could be just at the edge, you know, and it could have been my fault. I might have hit something like, a you know, I was using it quite a bit uh, a couple weeks ago. and I might have hit something with it. But Cold Skill does a pretty good job with the heat treats, but, you know, it's hard to say. Yeah, so what you can do is you can do two different things. You can use permanent marker on the lock face for lock stick, whether it's a button lock, a frame lock, liner lock, it doesn't matter. But dry it off first. Get the oil completely off. You have to dry it off. Then add permanent marker. Now, there's another thing you can do. If the permanent marker doesn't work, do it a couple times, too. Don't put just one layer. Put the permanent marker on, blow on it, let it dry, put another layer, blow on it, let it dry, put another layer. Now, if that doesn't make it perfect, which it most likely will, put some number two lead pen, just some lead pencil. That's it. I was going to say number two, like I'm in school or something, but just some graphite, some lead pencil on top of the marker. One or the other can usually do it. But if uh, the lead pencil won't do it itself and the marker won't do it by itself, marker, then lead on top of it will do the trick every time. Yeah, I know. It is a pretty big chip. <laughs> it, it is pretty significant. Um, I, I got to sharpen it out. It's definitely noticeable. Never heard about the marker. Yeah, the marker works great. That's actually the one I always do first before pencil. I usually do permanent marker and a layer of lead pencil on top of it. But I do like two layers of permanent marker. It works great. There's some knives that... Um, see, now, okay, now this is the little tiny issue is that 
rumor has it or people say that if you do do that it'll never get rid of the lock stick it'll just prevent it from happening so later on in the future when it wears off it'll come back now i found that to not be a hundred percent true because i have a knife that i did that for for like a year and it had horrible i mean the worst lock stick ever like very very bad and i always did that to it and it would last for a long time, but eventually it'd wear out and the lock stick would come back. And, um, but lighter every time it can make lighter every time. And I just kept doing it. And now it doesn't have lock stick and I don't put the stuff on there no more, but I could, what happens is though, is that when it does wear out, the lock stick comes back, just keep applying it. Either one, it won't break in, but you don't have lock stick or two, eventually it'll break in. Now, if you want to, you can clean it off and you can keep doing it or send it to Richie B. If it's just a uh, a raw titanium lock bar with no steel lock bar insert, send it to Knife Monitors, and they'll carbonize your lock face for you. That's the best way to go about it. Oh, he's right here. <laughs> if none of that works, hit us up. There we go. We can. There you go. There you go. See, I was. I should have made that clear. A lot of. Locks that comes from knives with a titanium lock face that doesn't have a lock bar insert. If you have like a, a button lock like the Malibu, that's easy to fix with the marker or lead. But if you do have just a titanium frame lock without a lock bar insert and you have really, really bad stick, I hate to say it, but most likely your lock face isn't carbonized. It's just not. And I'm not trying to bash your knife. But it happens, and some knife companies don't carbonize it, or they don't do a good job carbonizing it, but you can send it right to Knife Modders, and they'll fucking carbonize it for you and make it perfect. Perfect. Looks like a potato chip. Oh, you have your first two son slip joint coming Tuesday. Um, Yeah, Um, I think you should try some of their full... Man, I... Where is it? I got one around here somewhere. I'll tell you what, this thing is badass. Do I got it near? I got it nearby somewhere. Oh yeah, right here. This Tucson right here, guys. I'm telling you, holy cow, is it badass. When we carbonize, we apply a very thin layer of carbide on the lock face. So you have a much harder surface meeting the tang of the blade, thus getting rid of the lock stick. Yes, because what he's saying is because before he does that, the problem is that your titanium is softer than the steel of the blade. The blade steel is so hard, but the lock face is soft, so it just doesn't work out together. They don't, you could, I could say they don't mash, but the problem is, is they do mash. So when he carbonizes, it makes it harder. Now you have two hard surfaces rubbing together, thus not creating lock stuck. Tuya definitely makes good knives, and so does Tucson. This thing is so badass. I can't wait for the review on this one. The TS301. It is so sweet, man. These thumb studs. They, he has another one, like the 305 or something coming that's very similar. But it's all carbon fiber. This one is just redonkulously good. Titanium frame lock. Micarta. Um, I think this one's 14C28N. And uh, carbon fiber, titanium backspacer clip, all the bells and whistles. Uh, what else? There was another knife. Oh, yeah. I want to talk about this. I got to talk about it right now. Yeah, I got that one coming up soon, too. The um, the BGM knives. Now, I am probably going to send that uh, that Demco, not my 8020, but the 8020.5 to get that regrind. I would guess that all things considered, Jared likes Tucson. No, I fucking hate Tucson. Um, I heard, uh, I'm not, man, I feel like I'm bashing him now. Um, but, uh, I heard lefty, he made a comment saying that, uh, 
you know, he thinks they are extremely well built, great detents, great this, great that, awesome fit and finish, very strong, yada, 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 he said, but he doesn't really like any of their designs. Now, what I say to that is, well, you haven't seen enough because they got a design for everybody. They definitely got a design for you because they got like 300 knives. They have a fucking design for everybody. Now, I don't like all their designs either, but there's a couple that in my head are perfect for lefty EDC. In my head. He'll probably bash the shit out of him if you ever got him. Anyways, but he said they didn't have any soul. And I'm thinking like, okay, I can kind of see that. You think they don't have any soul? I kind of see that, right? But when I think of a knife with soul, I think of like a USA made knife. Not a Chinese knife. And he said, Riat has soul. Riat. And I kept thinking, like, for all you know, they're fucking made in the same damn shop. Right? <laughs> like, that's what I'm thinking in my head. And I'm obviously just thinking shit, you know, like, what if I told you that Riat and Two Sons were made in the same damn building, you know? But um, but no, Riat's are very, very, very good quality. And I get that. But Two Sons. They, they have a lot of designers, a lot of great designers. Some of them are a little younger, some of them not. And, um, you know, so I, I got to give them credit. They're, you know, they, they do have a lot of designers, some from the U.S., some not. Um, they make amazing quality knives for a great, great price. And if you've seen me compare... I did that one comparison between a Rhea and a Tucson. They were almost identical. I think even Tucson had a couple things that the Rhea didn't have. Or maybe they were about, about the exact same, but they had like everything the exact same. Reverse detent ramps, caged ceramic bearings um, on a racetrack. Both of them had the same thing. Um, phenomenal fit and finish all the way around. Like I showed all the contouring. I showed all the milling. I showed like they were like the exact same. The one difference was, was the one was like triple the money, which I get sometimes, you know, maybe some of their, their quality control is a little bit better possibly, but yes, Tucson does have a shit ton of very ugly knives, but they also have some very good ones. Mazwan and some of the night morning designs are absolutely beautiful. Yeah. Out of 300 knives, there's like 12 that I love, right? Out of 300. So that says a lot, too. There's a lot of designs I don't like. And I'm not saying they're not good. They're great quality. There's not for me. I don't really like them. But then there's those few. Hey, Richie, there's that one. You had it on eBay for sale. It had the, the, the anodizing on it. I think it was the, um. oh, man, it was the two something. What was it? I, I reviewed one. It looks crazy. It's small. It has like a bird shaped uh, beak of a blade, but only like a two and a half inch blade. What knife is that? I've been trying to get one ever since I reviewed it. I reviewed that one and it blew me away. I think it, it I never would have thought I would have liked it. I literally seen it a hundred times and says, Nope, not for me. Got it in my hand. And I said, What the fuck is going on? The quality was so good on it. I can't remember the number. I did review one though. And and uh <clears throat> excuse me. Richie B had one on eBay for sale with anodizing done on it with uh their anodizing on it. What one was it? Richie went quiet on me now. It was a little one. It was such a good one, too. 73 people in here. Thank you guys for uh, hanging out with me. Some one of you guys got to remember that shit. The first knife I bought was a Kershaw Natrix. I could barely open it, and it hurt my fingers. Deathlock. It felt like a... I felt like a big pussy. Almost stopped me from getting into knives. Yeah, that... So Kershaw has that... Or had that issue just a little bit. Where if you touched their lock bar at all, like when you were flipping their, their knife, if you touched this and tried to flip it at the same time, it wouldn't flip. 
Like it would just sit there rock solid closed and you'd be pushing. And the more you pushed, the stronger it wouldn't open. And it would just sit there and you're like, ah, because you're holding the lock bar. You got to take your finger and slide it back to here and then flip it and it flips fine. But I did the same thing, man. I used to take my bare knuckle when I first got it. I used to skip off of that flipper tab. After a while, though, it breaks in. You get used to moving your finger out of the way, and it winds up working out. But it does piss you off at first. Evil E likes a good tanto. I got a couple good tantos. That's a good tanto right there. That's a damn good tanto right there. Look at that tanto. Look at that thing. That's a sweet tanto. Yes, that is the reason. It's called death lock. It's very common on a lot of frame locks, especially if they have a strong detent already. When you touch the lock bar, it locks the detent into the hole, and it can't come out. So the more you push on the, the flipper tab, the stronger you squeeze, you'll never get it open. Sometimes you will get it open, but it hurts. Now they have the stupid double. Yes, and Soltalic is talking about right now that in order to fix it, they came out with the double detent system. Stupid double detent system on everything that's not assisted. I hope they bring a normal detent back to ball bearings. I haven't tried their new double detent system, so I can't really speak on it. But, yeah, they decided to do a double detent system now. Which is supposed to help with it not to have death lock. Yes! The 230 Ace. Russ, you son of a bitch. You're something else, man. You're the man. You are the man. Let me find it. Thank you, Russ. Um... Yes, that's it, Russ. You, man, you are the man. I'm going to turn this down because I want you guys to see this. This, honestly, I've held a lot of two sons, guys. I know it's small. I know it doesn't look at it. You're going to look at it and you're going to be like, that thing looks like a fucking, it looks stupid. It looks like crap. I'm telling you guys, this thing was phenomenal. The build quality, the fit and finish. Everything was so good on this knife. The action, I can't even explain to you how good the action was. The reverse flicking action was better than a spider co. I mean, it was so good. Now, I'm going to show it to you guys, so don't leave just because you guys are going to say, oh, it looks like crap. It was great. Let's look at it. That's me in my hand. Look at this thing. This thing was so awesome. I know what it looks like. I'm telling you. It is so smooth. The fit, the finish, the action, the geometry was insane. See my hand right there when I went like that? That was me saying badass. Let me fast forward so you guys can see it closed. There's the other side. I'm telling you, this Tucson was so good. Oh, yeah, here's the size so you guys can see the size really quick. That's uh, I'm not going to do it justice because that's a mini grip. There's it next to the Ace Biblio. So you can see it's not a big knife, but a great one. You could get a full grip on it, and the cutting on it was so good. But when you close it, it kind of looks like a, a circle. Oh, there we go. I'm going to do the action right here. The action was so good. I'm showing you how good that detent is. The thumb flick, the reverse flick, it didn't matter. It was so good. Man, I wish I could. I, I'll, I would buy one of those if I could get one. That's how much I liked it. I can't find them no more. I don't, they don't. I think they stopped making them or something. Sorry, guys. I kind of went on a craziness there. But it was that, that good. And uh, I, I've tried to find them, but I can't find them no more. 
The last one I seen was from Richie B on eBay, and I'm sure it sold. Um, the TS230 looks like an arrowhead for a blade shape. I found that's so appealing. Uh, uh, that's so appealing looking. I wanted it as my first titanium knife. Was going to use it as a chaparral. You haven't had a titanium knife? Logical? Are you kidding me? You haven't had a titanium knife? I want you to say that again. Tell, tell me the truth now. I want, let's have the truth come out. Because if you haven't had a damn titanium knife, we're going to have some issues. What are we talking about? I know you've had a titanium knife. Are you talking about just like a titanium Tucson knife or something? Hey, baby! Can you bring me my jewel on the charger, please? I know. I left it. What? I don't know about all that. Well, we're talking knife talk over here. I know, but it's just really quick. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. Oh, check this out, guys. We'll play. We got this VR game that my buddy let us borrow. It's VR. It's a headset. You put it on. And you have these controllers. Holy shit. It feels like you're in another dimension. I got the box. I got in the ring. It's kind of cartoony, but when you're there, you see everything. Like It's like you're there. So it's so realistic. You actually feel like you're there. Like I really felt like I was boxing this dude. Yes, I knocked him out. But everything else, like there's a zombie game where you have like a knife and stuff and a gun and you have to walk up to these zombies and you got to stab them. But you're really stabbing. Like it's, you're, it's like you're really there. It's fucking crazy. I wish I could put it on this camera right now and let you guys see it. It's nuts. Sorry about my camera. Okay, I want to talk about uh, this other thing with these Kaisers really quick. I like to fidget with knives, opening and closing like a crazy person while I'm doing yard work. I can see that. My neighbors probably think I'm just nuts, but are bearings always better or washers just as good? That's a, um, it depends. So I'm going to go through this test that I seen a long time ago. So I seen a test where they took ceramic bearings, steel bearings, washers, and Teflon washer. Took a bucket of mud or like a bin of mud and just dirt and shit. Threw them all in there, covered them up, shook them up, took them out. Teflon did the best. The ceramic bearings, I think, wound up getting second. Then the phosphor bronze, then the, the steel uh, bearings. Now, however, nine times out of ten normally... A phosphor bronze washers are gonna get are gonna be better than ceramic bearings. It's just the way it is. There, it's a tighter fit, right? With bearings, you have a gap. Now, with certain specific ceramic bearings, they're fit in there really good, where there's not much exposed. It's like the side of the washer that holds the bearings is fitting in the seam of which dirt would get in. So it just kind of depends. But if you're around lots of dirt and sand, Teflon and phosphor bronze are going to be the best. Now, if you're not around dirt and sand and fucking your knife up, then bearings are going to be better, in my opinion. And the reason why is they're really easy to clean out. You can just blow them out. Like, literally, you can just go like that. You can rinse them out with alcohol. That's what I do. You you know, they're very easy to clean. Um, and they give you better action. Now, some... Some phosphor bronzes are just awesome. I mean, I have some phosphor bronzes that are very, like this one right here. I know this is a, uh, a Ganzo, but I mean, it's stupid smooth. I have a lot of stupid smooth phosphor bronze washer knives, but um, usually ceramic bearings are going to be smoother. Check this out, guys. I got the excipiter back. I loaned it to uh, Therapy Gudge. This knife is awesome. Such a good knife. You can really feel the build quality of this knife. Now, 
let's talk about this Kaiser thing because I noticed something. So I've got a lot of Kaisers these days, guys, a lot of them. So I took the three knives that are just so smooth it doesn't make sense. One was the mini bag letter, and I mean, it's stupid smooth. Like, it doesn't even make sense how, like, watch when I unlock the thing. It's stupid smooth, right? The big bag, and this is the bag letter two that's on ceramic bearings, and it's on their new ceramic bearing system. Okay? The next one, stupid smooth. Doesn't make sense. It's just ridiculously smooth. Now this other new one, the Kaiser Lan. Stupid, smooth. Well, I was looking at them and I noticed something that was similar across the board. I don't think I'm going to be able to show you, but I'm going to try. If you look into the bearings on the blade, so like on this part of the blade right here, right, where you see that blade right here, there's a divot on both sides. It's like a channel. I'm going to try to show it to you. It, it's the same on all three of these knives. Now, the other knives that are very smooth, but not like these, don't have it. So it has something to do with this. I don't know if it's like weight removal or something, but check it out. Let's see if you guys can see that. Come on, camera. Come on. Come on, focus. It's trying. I'm going to go up closer one more time and see if it works. Come on, camera. Come on, camera. Focus. Focus on me. Not back here. I got to block this over here. It's not going to work. Anyways, there's like two channels on both sides of the knife that go down to the bearings and it's the same on all three of these knives I, I'm, I'm trying it's just not working but that uh the channel oh there it goes right there okay you see it i'll try getting a little closer see that the channel on both sides right there It, and it goes all the way to the bearings. It's like there's there's like steel removed on both sides. I've never seen that on a knife before. When I seen it, I was like, is that a deep? It almost looks like a gigantic detent ramp is what it looks like. But it's on both sides. Why? I, I don't, I, I'm trying to figure out in my head, how can that benefit? Because it definitely does something. Now, looking at it. I can think of only a couple things. One, oil gets in there really good. That's one thing. Two, maybe their weight is taken off right there, and it makes it to where the weight from the blade is so heavy on this side. I don't know. I can't figure it out, but it's there, and it's on all three of the knives. You might even be able to see it a little bit better. Well, let me see this. This one, you can actually see the bearings. See it right there? See the bearings? You can actually see the bearings because the channel is cut on both sides. Come on. Don't try to peek through that hole. It's so hard. Everything's backwards in a camera, guys. Let me try coming back in. It's like trying to look through the hole. Anyways, it's really big on this. There we go. See how you can see the bronze or whatever? It's so hard to use this camera like this because everything's the opposite way. But it's weird, though. I'll definitely show you guys in the review and stuff because it's fascinating to me. Oh, man. Suck my dick and penis and balls, baby. Wow. He came up with a real unique name. And then decided to spit, uh, 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 troll us, I guess. Spam us. You guys gonna get rid of him or what? You guys wanna leave him in? I kind of like, you know, suck my dick and penis and balls, baby. I say we leave him in for a little bit. 
<laughs> Twice in one day. Get both of them. All right. Let's see. What else did I want to talk about? Okay. I talked about that. Oh, the fight tomorrow. You guys ready? You guys ready for the fight? Come on. I don't have to tell you who's fighting tomorrow. Are you guys ready for the fight or what? Is I, I've been fucking waiting a long time to see one of these guys knock the fuck out. Come on. I love to eat my girlfriend's shit. Wow. A little too personal. But uh, hey, do you, buddy? Do you. Anyways, the fight tomorrow. Ah! <laughs> I know you would. But you're not at least a little bit curious to see him. You're going to watch it. Don't lie, Talica. After, I know you're not going to buy the pay-per-view, maybe, but afterwards, it's going to show up on YouTube, and you're going to watch dude get knocked out. I have a two-inch penis. I can move it really fast. Uh, you must be related to lefty EDC. <laughs> Oh, oh, I don't know if he'll get knocked out, but dude's going to outgas him no matter what. But I think if I had to guess how it was going to go, it's kind of hard to say. But I think, in all honesty, Mayweather's going to tear his body apart. I think he's going to, because he's shorter and smaller, I think Mayweather's one going to outbox him, obviously. But he's got to be careful because if he gets in the pocket, uh, the Paul brother does have the power to knock him out. He does. But it ain't going to happen because he's not going to hit him. Or he's not going to be able to hit him hard. And he's going to stay in the pocket and he's going to tear that motherfucker's insides apart. Dude's going to get liver shot over liver shot over liver shot just left and right. And Mayweather is going to either beat him in a KO from tearing his body apart. This is my opinion. I don't know. Or he's going to keep doing that and then keep going up top and then getting them. And then he's going to get a couple knockdowns and he's going to win from the decision because he knocked him down a few times. I don't think he's going to knock him out. I don't think either one's going to get knocked out. But when he fought that one Chinese kid, I think he was Chinese, he knocked him out, but it was stopped. I guess that's kind of the same thing. So they could stop the fight. Like if he keeps knocking him down, right? Like say if he knocks him down three times in a round, it's automatically done. I think that's the limit. You can only be knocked down three times in a round, I think. It's eight rounds, three minutes a piece. Get down on your knees and suck daddy dick, baby. Don't mind my name. I was talking to somebody else on live. Okay. But you said it like 16 times. All right, guys, get him out of here. Fuck it. Get him out of here. He's not if he if I don't care about his name. If he had anything substantial to say, at least give us fucking details, you asshole. He's not giving us details. He's not doing anything. He didn't even tell us what the shit tastes like. But he wants to keep telling us about it. So I don't want him to just keep telling us about what he does. I just you know, I'd rather hear details. A liver shot will drop you no matter how. Right. That's my point. And how do you stop the best boxer in the world from hitting you in the liver? You can't. He's fucked. I think that. Uh, I, I, I do think he can box, but let's be real. Technically, he lost to KSI. I don't think he lost that fight. I'll be honest. I think Logan won that fight. The 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 tie, I do agree. That was a tie. The second one, I personally, I, it doesn't matter. Either way, he lost, right? The question is, do you think KSI could beat Mayweather? No. So how the fuck can the person that lost against KSI beat Mayweather now? Of course he can't. He's going to get his ass kicked, and it's going to be hilarious. And I can't wait. And then Woodley... You guys know about that, right? The other brother with Tyrone Woodley and uh, Jake Paul. 
That's the one I'm more excited about. I'll be honest. And the reason why is because with the Mayweather fight, Mayweather's he ain't got a chance, right? With Woodley, he has a chance. Jake Paul is a good boxer, and he has a good chance of beating Woodley. Woodley's going to win, in my opinion, but that is a more evenly fight, and I can't wait to watch it. Do you guys ever wish you could reach through your screen and throw punch somebody? Yeah. You know who I always want to throat punch? And I'll be honest. I've literally thought about this so many times. When I'm playing Call of Duty, the guys that either are snipers from the sky or two, all they use is incendiaries. I literally just want to appear in the room that they're in and just bitch smack them, right? Every time, like they use an incendiary, they're going to go, bam, and they're just like, Psh! And you're like, what the fuck happened every time? So then they're they're so scared of using an incendiary and actually grab a gun <laughs> that you actually have to use a little ability, you know, or a little bit of skill set to use. But no, they don't want to use a gun that takes a little bit of a skill set. They want to just run in a room and go pow, 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 with fire and fucking hit everybody in there. You you can shoot them four times and they're still going to get you because it's fucking, you don't even aim. You just shoot it. And then the the one-shot sniper guys, they they do that, the quick aim. They just quick aim and shoot, quick aim and shoot, which is so unrealistic, but it's a glitch in the game. Get this guy the fuck out of here. But I'm going to take a shit and your girlfriend, you didn't even spell it right, bro. It's in your girlfriend's mouth. Get the, who, don't we have... A moderator in here, they can get this guy out of here. Let's see this one now. Fuck the LBGTQ community. Who agrees with me? Well, I would agree with you, but you ain't talking. You're fucking just saying stupid shit. I don't know. That's why I want a moderator to get him the fuck out of here. Why, why did I hire you guys <laughs> if you guys can't even get him out of here? Someone figured out how to make spam names. Wow. Must be at least 12 years old. Impressive. Got ghost. You're right. Yeah. He's probably 12 or 13. Oh, is that what it is? He keeps making new accounts. Well, I don't know what to say. I guarantee it's somebody. We, it's probably somebody that is is like, I don't know. Maybe I pissed somebody off. I try not to piss anybody off. I'll be honest. I, I try to be nice to everybody. Oh, is that what it is? I'm sorry, guys. I didn't mean to get on your damn job, but it sucks when they start making new names, I guess. Um, But whatever. Fuck them. It's MC. <laughs> it is. That's who it is. Oh, man. Anyone know how to dox or ban IP? That that's hilarious. Okay, so you guys heard me say the other day that they have the full sheepdog non-flipper coming out. The same version that I have. But I don't know where it's at. Is that it? Yep. This version. They and this thing is so awesome. They have a full version of this coming out. Story time? Okay. So, um, what story was I going to tell? Okay. So, I got, um, okay. So, I can tell another story if this one's not good enough because this is kind of just like a, some work, a work story. So, um, I was working, uh, construction and I was, um, I was in, well, so the house is in, um, shut your mouth, you bitch. Wow. So I'm working in North Chicago and, um, we're doing siding, fish and gutters. And a lot of houses there are like incredibly old, like hundred years old, 80 years old, falling apart, you know, very, very poor, bad neighborhood. And there's this lady and She's she kind of helps the community out with her church and stuff. Well, she bought this big ass house, like a four story house that still had an attic on top of it. I mean, very very tall, but it's like falling apart. Well, she has the money to do siding on it, which will make the house look newer, right? 
The problem is, is that the house is so bad that it's hard to hang siding on it without it falling out because it's, there was parts of the house. I could literally just push my fingers through because it was that rotted. So we told her like, listen, this is impossible. You have to pay us to reframe some of the outside of the house to hold the siding. She couldn't do it. She couldn't afford it. Couldn't, and we wanted to help. We really did. This lady, like I said, she kind of helps the community and stuff. Um, and, you know, it's a very poor community. So having good people like her in the area is a blessing. And it's for a church and everything else. Anyways, the point is, is we wound up taking the job, which we shouldn't have. We took the job to do the siding. Now, we made a deal with ourselves that what we'll do is in spots that are impossible, we will hang wood in those spots, right? Basically for free, just to make sure our siding doesn't fall down. So um, we're working on the house. And like I said, this house is like mushy. Because it's that bad. It's just, it's old. It's like a hundred years old and it's in a bad area. So I'm on a scaffold, four stories high, three or four stories high, one of the two. I'm very high. And when I'm on the scaffold, um, you know, you walk back and forth. It's only like a one foot plank, right? And we run it all the way down the side of the house, but we're way up in the air. Like we're really high. Well, when I was up there, I put my hand like this and I leaned on the window, right? And as I leaned on the window, the window just goes in, right? So I went, for, think about this. You guys got to imagine how terrifying it would be to fall four stories, right? So I'm four stories high and I fall. I don't know who's messaging me. Because I rested my arm on the window and the window fell in. Now, I didn't fall to the ground. I fell into the fucking house. So, next, my heart dropped. I'm talking about, like, like sometimes a scaffold will adjust itself. You'll be up there, and it'll, like, just fall an inch, right? It'll just, right? That makes your heart drop, let alone being up there and completely falling sideways. Well, when it happened, I mean, my, my heart just dropped. But thank God I fell into the inside of the house. Now I'm on the inside of this house. And it's a fucking maze. I don't know where I'm at. I don't know what to do. It's a massive house. Like I think at one time, like back in like, I don't know, the 1920s or something. It was like a schoolhouse for bad kids or something. I don't fucking know. But it's big. So now I got to find my way out of this place. Because... Because a window gets installed from, you know, the way we had to install the window because I had to put the window back, but I couldn't do it from the outside now. Like I had to do it from the inside. I only got one partner with me, like just the way it worked. I, we couldn't, you know, anyway, so we want to figure it out. I don't remember. I figured out the house. It was a damn maze though. Doors were locked everywhere. I didn't understand it, but it was crazy though. Falling into a house, four stories high up in the air. Because I rested my arm on the window. Cause that's how easily think about that. Think about if you had a window on your house right now, if you just went like this and the window just fell in, that's how bad this house was. And there's a lot of houses like that in that area. Um, but, uh, blip, blip, blip. I reported him for hate speech. Oh, thanks William. Yeah, if, you know, I don't mind getting a little troll here and there, but sometimes, man, it's that was ridiculous. You know, Metal Complex, he needs to watch his mouth and be careful what he says on my platform. You know, we don't take that shit here at Needs Nights. This ain't Metal Complex. Next time, I want to be prepared to roast them. I'm literally going to write down about 15 roasts, maybe 20, so that I'm prepared. I wasn't prepared. I'll be honest, guys. I wasn't prepared to roast him. Next time, he's getting it. He's getting it. Um, it's the spamming that sets me off. Only us has to get away with it here. <laughs> right? Only stupid still Steve. <laughs> I don't even mind half the things he said. It's just he wasn't saying nothing. His name was just shitty. That's it. So what are you saying, bro? Like, Obviously, it's a, a kid, but it's like, where's the fun in that? When I was a kid, you know how we did it when we were kids? We did like jerky boy shit. We actually would call places from the newspaper or from, because remember the newspaper? It would have like um, 
I'm selling a toaster for $5. We knew right away when we would look in the newspaper and there'd be like the for sale stuff. If there was a guy selling a toaster for $5 or a person selling a gerbil for $3, we knew right away, oh, we got a good one here. We'd call the motherfuckers. We'd call them up. Like say this one time somebody had gerbils. They wanted to sell, and we'd call them up and be like, "Yeah, how many gerbils you got?" You know, and they'd say, "Oh, we have we have five gerbils for ten dollars a piece." You're like, "Well, check this out. I got a." And we would literally do this. We would be like, "Well, I got three books and an iron. I'll trade you plus twelve dollars for all of them." <laughs> and sometimes these people would do it. Like we even got people like literally to give us the stuff. We never went and got it, but it's <laughs> like, we would just prank call the shit out of people selling stuff in the newspaper because it'd be ridiculous things. I don't know. I don't know because I know when I was on and I'm talking to Todd right now, he says, how didn't they block? How didn't Google block? And when I tried to say some shit to lefty EDC on his platform, it wouldn't even let it go through. It would not let it go through at all. Eh. Lacey says, I love prank calls. And she goes, I still do. <laughs> People, children do grow up eventually. Not all of us. <laughs> when did, when, we did that when I was a kid too. I think every kid did. You know, prank calls were hilarious, but you actually dealt with them, right? You actually said something. That guy just wrote a a, a, a dumb handle and then spammed it writing LOL, LOL, LOL. Like, dude, we get it, bro. You eat your girlfriend's shit. Fucking who doesn't? <laughs> I want to mess with them, but it's hard to because they don't say nothing. Yep, actually call the person and say stupid things. Yeah, but what was great was when you called somebody who actually wanted to talk to you. So like like I said, sometimes we would call like 24-hour cleaning services or something. We'd literally do it like jerky boys. We would call people that actually wanted to talk to you. Like I said, we'd get the newspaper and find somebody who was selling something. Because that person wants to talk to somebody that's willing to buy their toaster for $5. But then we would just sit there and troll the shit out of them. Like we'd ask them a hundred questions about it. We'd try to make a deal with them. And we'd always make a deal with them with some crazy ass shit. You know, like I got a belt and six toothpicks, you know, like trying to trade with them. One time we called a 24 hour um, service that uh, for if you... um if you get flooded and we were telling them fucking, we had dogs floating in here and grandma's screaming. She's covered, you know, like she's swimming into the kitchen right now. And <laughs> it was a 24 hour service. We used to do all kinds of shit like that. I'm guilty of being, I oh, where to go. I'm guilty of being silly, but use some sophistication in your humor. Right. That's what I'm saying. Any who can say bad words. Exactly. Exactly. Because if it was good, man, we could have sat here and got a good laugh out of it. But the guy didn't even say anything. He just told us, you know, he just named his name, some of his personal issues, and then said, laugh out loud. Well, come on, buddy. You just told me you ate your girlfriend's shit. Give me some fucking details. I need more details than that. My son and his new friends were pranking people a few years ago, and I caught them. They thought they were screwed. I laughed hysterically and said, that isn't how you do it. This is how you do it. <laughs> I've done that shit, too. <laughs> I've done that with my nieces and nephews. Like, hey, 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 what are you kids doing? You're doing it wrong. Let me show you. <laughs> Let me teach you how to do it. I, you know what I always do? I always think it's hilarious. I always go up to one of the, the younger teens and I always go, hey, give me a cigarette. Because <laughs> I know them fuckers smoke. Give me a cigarette. And they're like, I don't smoke. And I'm like, give me a cigarette. <laughs> I ain't going to snitch at them or nothing, but I just think it's funny. I, say, I know. Oh, I see your fingers. I know what you're doing. No back of the yards is an actual hood in Chicago. 
talking about him is exactly what he wants. Yeah, I know. I know. But I get a goof out of it, so fuck it. <laughs> he must have been Canadian with all the little effort. <laughs> uh, did I miss Gordon's troll too? That's an MC. Talked to this old lady for an hour. I felt so bad. She thought I was her granddaughter. Oh, you're cold. You're cold. <laughs> I never told her any different and made her day. She said, hey, you made her day. That's a counts, right? You made her day. But I bet you she told everybody in the neighborhood about it, too. Oh, I talked to Susie this morning. Hey, William. Thank you, man. Thank you, bud. I appreciate the donation. You guys are awesome, man. There's still 66 people in here. You guys are great. And it's 944. We will be getting out of here. I'll, I'll give it like three more minutes. I wish I could think of another story to tell you guys. Um, I was thinking about telling this one story, but it is a little fucking crazy. And it is knife related, but I don't know if it'd be appropriate. Um, I don't really mind saying stuff at the end of the video because I feel like I can get away with a little bit more at the end, but I don't know. You know, with YouTube being the way they are, it's kind of crazy. Um, tell it, tell it, tell it. All right. It's 745 there. It's 945 here. All right. So this one is a little crazy. So um, this is, I don't remember how old I was. I was like 15, 16 or something, maybe something like that. Anyways. It was before my dad got hurt. My dad got hurt when I was 17. So I can usually relate things to an age because of where I lived and what's happened in my life, right? What was before and after? Well, this was before my dad got hurt. And um, I live in this apartment complex and across the part, you know, the street from the apartment complex is, an is another, it's like, a, it's a project, right? So it's just a bunch of group of apartment buildings, right? And they sit side by side, just one after another, right? And there's like a sidewalk that goes in between them and that's how you get into them. <clears throat> so you can picture a bunch of buildings just one after another, right? And there's um there's another taller one in front of it. There's a basketball court on the side of it. The basketball court is like crazy as shit. Anyway, so we're in between these buildings and we're standing there. And so there's like... uh a few of us. I don't remember how many because there was other people too. We were standing in a group of like three or four and like down the sidewalk in between the building, you can see a person here, a person there, whatever, right? This dude comes walking by and um, I seen him walk by, right? And when he walked by, like he gave like this, this look, right? Just walked by and just kind of like looked. The dude that's like kind of next to me, he's not like, like right next to me. But like he's the, like next to me, kind of. He um, he didn't see him. Dude just walks by, and like five minutes, five minutes later, we're just sitting there shooting this shit, you know. And like five minutes later, this dude comes back around with a, you know, and comes up behind dude, and just starts fucking drilling him. Just starts sticking him. Dude screams, right? Dude, sc I mean, just like he heard like the 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 pain and the gurgling coming out just like a siren. Um, and he hits him like I don't know, five, six, seven times, just bam, 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 bam. And uh, a bunch of people took off running. Right. And we didn't take off running. Like, I don't know, dude, just so you guys know, like, I don't know this dude. So first of all, I'm not going to save his fucking life. I don't know him for shit. He could have fucking raped dude's daughter for all I know. I don't know him. So I'm not like going to stick up for him or nothing like that. We didn't do anything. We didn't run or nothing, but dude took off, right? After dude stick, 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 stick. Dude took off around the corner. <clears throat> I remember seeing this girl. This girl starts screaming and freaking out. And, um, you know, we didn't know what to do. We were young. You know, you don't really know what to do. It's not your place. You don't know the person, you know. Like, I knew the other people, like, were, who I was with. But there's, like, there's multiple buildings. Now, they know each other, but I don't know them. Right. It's kind of weird. It's like they know each other, but I don't know him. And um, I don't think he lived there. That was another thing. I don't think he lived there. Uh, but anyways, dude didn't die. He was uh, um, at least as far as I know. I mean, he's probably dead now, maybe. But but uh, but no, it was crazy, though, because watching it, watching that, you know, it was like uh, seven feet from me, 10 feet, maybe 
maybe maybe a few more feet. I don't know. It was right there though. And hearing that that sound, and I saw the whole thing because the angle I was at was facing down the alley, right? The two buildings. I'm here's the two buildings, and I'm like right here facing towards the dude. And when dude came back around and came walking up, I saw the whole time. I didn't know what he was gonna do. And like I said, I don't know him, but I thought it was crazy as shit. And that sound, I can still hear the dude, you know, like that scream. When you hear a man scream, it's pretty crazy. Um, and <clears throat> the ambulance did wind up coming. By that time, we were gone. I did not stay for that shit. We wound up dipping out afterwards. Like we wound up taking off like pretty quick. So like right away, we didn't run or nothing. Two minutes later, we did because we don't want to be involved in nothing. Now, here's one more. I'll say one more. And if you guys want to, you guys can look this one up. It's pretty tragic. Um, so it's it's pretty bad though. I don't know if I should even be talking about it, but I'm almost done. This baby, um, or this uh lady, right? Her and her boyfriend. She had a baby, she had a boyfriend. And um, her baby came up missing. So her baby's missing. And um, I don't know who called the cops. I have no idea, right? And uh, I live next door. And the cops wind up coming. And they're, they take the woman and the, the guy <clears throat> to the interrogation. They start interrogating them. Eventually, they get it out of them that... Um, Dude killed the baby, right? And she, like, covered it up, I guess, because it's the mother, so she's responsible for the baby. The boyfriend is the one supposedly that killed the baby. Like, a two, like I don't know, like one and a half. I think it was 18 months old. That's what it was, 18 months old. Um, if you look at the story, you can find out how old the baby was. But So they went searching, right? And the boyfriend, before they found out, he had taken it put it in a backpack and put it in a dumpster, right? So I'm watching all these cops just searching dumpster after dumpster. Get this. Hey, thank you, man. I heard a man scream when I got a screwdriver stuck in his ribs for being a douche. <laughs> yeah, that'll make you scream. For sure. Um, <laughs> and a screwdriver fits perfectly um so they're looking through these dumpsters right but they don't find nothing they literally don't find nothing dude goes i this is what wound up happening so when they interrogated him it wasn't till like two days later or something till they found out like they figured out like they asked him a bunch of questions wound up realizing something's up with these two we got to bring him in the interrogation room. but there was like two three days later so during the two days they were looking in the dumpsters they were looking everywhere but they couldn't find nothing so the boyfriend winds up going and getting the baby out of the dumpster puts it back in the bag takes it to another dumpster that they already searched so because he's thinking they're gonna wind up finding them they wind up researching the exact same places again and wind up finding the baby in the dumpster dead. And I just remember I just remember this being like a big thing. 17, maybe? I don't remember how old I was. I have no idea. It was around then because I was living in that building. And I had lived in this building for a long time. Not a long time, but eh, yeah, kind of. Because I lived in multiple different units of it. But the neighborhood, I had lived in multiple parts of the neighborhood too. But I was probably like 17 when this happened. Maybe 18. And yeah, um, but yeah, they wound up finding the baby and supposedly he, uh, the baby was crying and screaming and he was trying to shut it up and wound up. You guys can imagine the rest. I don't need to tell you the details of that, but, um, that one, uh, I wonder what happened with them. Let's look it up really quick. I don't even know how to look it up. Illinois baby killed Hebron project. 
Let's see if we can find it. No, that's the wrong one. Murder, charge, file, and shooting. It wasn't. He wasn't shot. There's just so much. Boy, talks after his own uh, safe. Nope. Hmm. Oh, here. Here we go. Ah! The fuck? No, I don't want to subscribe here. I'm trying to... This is some bullshit. Whatever, I'll find another one. Father who murdered Zion infant will always be loved. I don't think this was in either. A Zion man was charged Saturday held five million dollar bond disappearance twenty six was charged. Joshua went missing on Wednesday, prompting authorities from several law enforcement agencies. Okay. I don't think that's um I don't think this is the same one. I didn't know there was another one, but I'm sure there was. Oh, no, 2013. This is a different one because the one I'm talking about was in the Hebrews. The one I'm talking about was in the Hebrews. Yeah, but that's, um, if it's not far, well, it depends on how far because Enoch's like eight blocks away. Well, the one I'm talking about did too because. I don't know how old was or what year was it when I was 17. I found the one, but every time I click on it, look what happens. I click on it and the thing just covers up with this fucking trying to get me to subscribe. No, I'm not subscribing. Well, that whole time you were talking about that, I was thinking about like, what the hell that same exact story happened when I was living there. Well, I'm sure it's happened a few times. But like with the backpack specifically, whenever you in the dumpster. Yeah. Well, I want. But what? But what I'm talking about happened on Hebron Avenue. I was literally watching it. I was next door to it. I don't doubt it. I'm just saying maybe the specific details are getting. Yeah, they might have been twisted because I literally lived right next door and I watched them search the dumpsters. I watched it all. I was like literally in the middle of it, um, because it was my neighbor. Anyways. I love you guys. Thank you guys for hanging out. And thank you for all the donations. Thank you guys for being so awesome. Um, yeah, those websites are getting obnoxious. Just give us the story. Don't hide. Yeah, that's what it did. Every time I clicked on it, it gave me the fucking Herald thing and wanted me to subscribe for $1.99. It's right. like, no, I'm not doing that. I found another three other stories that were the same area, but just not the same thing. So, yeah, it's like magic, guys. It's like magic. I go, and she disappears. Who, me? Oh, me? I didn't realize my pants were like pulled down from a belly button. Yeah, a lot of people are moving too. Can you say my name before you go and make my day? What's up, Pogfish? Thank you for joining us today, Pogfish. I really appreciate you, buddy, for hanging out with us. I know you, uh, you've uh you been here for a while hanging out with us, Pogfish. I appreciate it. Thank you. It's Chicago 23. It's Thank you, boss. I appreciate it. You don't do them? Kiss back here. Woo woo. Pop face says woo woo. Woo woo. BGM knives woo, is in woo. here. What's up, BGM? Um, I might have. I don't know if you heard me earlier, but I got an AD 20.5 coming, and I just might need a regrind done on it on a shark's foot. If that's possible, um, I should have it probably Monday or something, but um, I'm hoping we can talk about it because I'd like to. Um, I'd like to get that done. Shout out to BGM Knives. Definitely check him out. He makes custom-made fixed blade knives. I have one right here somewhere. Bang! Here's one of them right here. He does regrinds. Definitely check him out. Awesome regrinds. I'd show you guys them, but I already sent them back to Talica after sharpening. So definitely check him out and get some regrinds and custom fixed blade knives from him. Kara! Thanks for giving me moderator's privileges. I actually had to use the trusty. Yeah, we had a fucking troll in here yeah. going buck wild. Doing what? He kept making re new names like I eat my girlfriend's shit. I like I just crazy. It was like his name? Yeah, but he kept making multiple names 
similar to that, like like crazy sick. But what was he saying? Shit like that. Like I I eat your girlfriend's shit. I eat my girlfriend's shit. Um oh fuck. Baby, stuff like that. Listen, well, hey, what? Hey, hey. what? I totally forgot to tell you that I'm liking your shit. He wasn't oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I said that to him. I was like, listen, man, you can't give us a name like that and not give us more details. All right, guys. I love you guys. Peace.